So now we have more information about what tragically happened to Juice World, And there's a lot of questions about what is this drug called Narcan that they tried to use to save his life. And as a recovering drug addict myself, and as somebody who has lost many, many people to the disease of addiction, I don't believe that people should pass away in vain. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about how they tried to save Juice World's life with Narcan, but what I really want is for you out there to understand how Narcan works, how you can get your hands on some so you can potentially save someone else's life. And listen, I'm gonna need help from all of you in the comment section because Narcan is different in different states with the way they give it out and things like that. So if you have experience in your specific state, make sure that you leave some comments, all right? What's up everybody, this is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, some things that I'm really passionate about are addiction, addiction recovery, and mental health. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And check it out, this Sunday, this Sunday, December 15th at 3 p.m. Pacific time, we are raising money for Faces and Voices of recovery, okay? They are an amazing nonprofit organization and they are dedicated to helping people struggling with addiction, increasing awareness, decreasing the stigma, trying to help change laws and everything like that. And we're gonna be talking about some of the laws in this video that everybody needs to know about. But anyways, join us this Sunday for our charity live stream where we raise money for faces and voices of recovery, all right? So yeah, as many of you saw, uh, I was discussing, you know, what happened with Juice World, and now at this time, we do know that it was a result of drugs, okay? And my goal is to help people out there because listen, I should be dead right now. I should be dead. Seven and a half years ago when I got clean, I had a 10% chance of living because of my drug addiction and my alcoholism, all right? And every single year, tens of thousands of people in the United States, just like Juice World, are dying, okay, from their addiction. So it is crucial, it is absolutely crucial that we all have all the information that we can to try and save more lives, all right? so. Apparently, the story goes that somebody, you know, with Juice World, um, uh, gave you know the the authorities a tip that they were bringing in a bunch of drugs, and uh, apparently, Juice World tried to take a bunch of Percocets to hide him so he didn't get in trouble, and that's what led to his passing. All right, but what they did was they tried to save his life with Narcan. Now, check it out. This is a life-saving drug. I'm actually certified in administering Narcan, okay? I went through a whole training here in Las Vegas. So let's talk about how opioids affect the brain, um, what leads to the overdose, and then how Narcan works and how you can get some if you need, all right? Because you might have a friend, a loved one, or you might just live in a city where the opioid epidemic is out of control, so it's good to know, all right? So, opioids, these are a depressant, okay? When you take these, they slow down your nervous system, and this can lead to a bunch of issues, such as depressing your breathing. Um, the way some people die is from throwing up and then choking on their own vomit and everything like that. Like when I went through the Narcan training, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, how to, you know, tilt the head to the side to make sure that they don't choke on their vomit, um, to look for, you know, uh, changes in the color, you know, if blood circulation isn't there and everything like that, like the signs of an overdose, okay? So what happens when you use opioids is that they occupy different receptors in your brain. Narcan is an amazing, drug, okay? Uh, it's a drug that counteracts the way that these opioids work. So if, if you think of your receptors like this, right? Opioids go in there and they're blocking, you know, those receptors, so they're occupying those receptors, okay? Narcan pretty much instantly pops the opioids out of those receptors, 
okay? So that's the way this drug works. Now, there are different ways that Narcan can be administered, all right? One of the most commons is through a spray, all right? Like a nasal spray, like a mist, all right? You can also inject Narcan. Um, during the training that I went through, we had these little things, almost like that they use for, I believe they said it's the same technology they use for uh, insulin and uh, EpiPen sometimes, where you like put it on someone's leg and it goes and like punctures them. And then what it's supposed to do is free up those receptors. Now, here's the thing, depending on how much the person use, they might need multiple doses of Narcan. All right, like best case scenario, one hit of Narcan, it frees up those receptors. So when we're looking at someone like Juice World and how it did not save his life, we don't know how much he took, but I've heard of people having to be hit with like three, four doses of Narcan to counteract their overdose. All right, so this is a very, very important medication that everybody needs to know about, all right? So how do you get a hold of this? Who has this? So in a lot of areas where the opioid epidemic is like a major problem, a lot of first responders are carrying Narcan on them. So we're talking about like police officers, firefighters, EMTs, all right? So when someone calls, and they go out there, a lot of these, uh, these, these people have Narcan on them in case it is an overdose, all right? Like nothing bad can happen if it's not an overdose, but if they presume it is, that can save someone's life. Because when someone is overdosing on opioids, like time is one of the most crucial things, all right? So real quick, while we're on the topic of first responders, let's talk about calling when someone overdoses. And this is this is one of the parts where I said, I might need your help in the comment section, okay? So one of the biggest issues, and it, this, this breaks my heart, a lot of people don't, don't make that phone call when a friend is overdosing right next to them because they're afraid of getting in trouble. They're afraid of getting arrested, right? Because they're in possession too. So there are many states, all right? There are many states out there and you'll have to check on your own state or if anybody knows uh, what the laws are in your state, there are many states where you have protection. So if someone is overdosing in your house and you call to say that they're overdosing, you are immune from anything happening to you. And the reason I say this is because so many people do not know this, all right? One of my best friends just a year or two ago, she had a friend of hers pass away at a party because nobody wanted to make that phone call. Um, one of my friends who's actually uh, someone I got sober with, part of his story is he was um, using with friends, they were using heroin and he overdosed and everybody just left and thank God he survived, you know what I mean? But people are so afraid of getting in trouble. So I try to talk about this as much as possible so you know, you know that you can make that call, all right? So research your, your state and see what the laws are there, all right? Now, how do you get a hold of Narcan? Like maybe you have a loved one in your house who's addicted to opioids, and maybe it's not heroin, maybe it's prescription opioids, all right? It is always, always a good thing to have Narcan in the house if someone has an addiction, all right? Now, talking about how to help that person, that is a whole separate video, okay? Like how to help them recover, but always have Narcan. So how do you get your hands on it? This is another thing check your states. Um, this also might be for counties as well. There are some areas where you can buy Narcan over the counter, okay? So you don't need a prescription or anything like that. So check, okay? So here in Las Vegas, just a few years ago, around the time I went through my Narcan training, they were passing a law where the pharmacies here in Clark County in Las Vegas can sell Narcan over the counter, all right? Um, aside from that, you might be able to get a prescription. It might be covered under your insurance. Um, if it's through your insurance, I believe like a lot of them, they have restrictions. So you can't just like stock, stock up on Narcan. Usually they'll give you two doses, whether or not it's like an injection or the nasal spray. It really depends. But here's one of the things, and this is why I encourage everybody to go out there and vote and find causes that matter to you and everything. Because much like 
other medications in the United States, like without insurance, they are expensive as hell, all right? Like, I don't know if it's gotten better with the prices of Narcan, but like, I remember some of the, um, the methods they used to administer Narcan were like, like for two doses, it was like over a thousand dollars, all right? So make sure that you look into that and check on that, okay? But the last thing that I'll say, okay? Because whenever this stuff happens, like we have to learn from it, all right? So make sure that you check your area and see if there are any nonprofits that give out free doses of Narcan, okay? So here in Las Vegas, we have a few organizations that do that. So like when I went through my training that this uh, this local organization put on, they gave us um, free doses of Narcan and it's still in my car. Like, thank God I haven't used it, all right? But like I said, if you have any information on your state and everything like that, please leave it in the comments below and let's have a discussion. Share this video and let's increase awareness about Narcan and the laws so we can try to help save more lives, all right? And don't forget this Sunday at 3 p.m. Pacific time, we'll be doing a charity live stream to raise money for faces and voices of recovery. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And I wanna send out a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel in any way, whether it's on Patreon or buying my mental health and addiction books at therewiredsoul.com or getting my merch, all of that helps me do what I love, which is making videos like this. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.